All right. So that's right. If we start with a line that has a slope of A over B, okay, then a perpendicular slope to that line Perpendicular slope to m would be negative b over a or b over negative a, if you want to say it that way too. Okay. Okay. But now if we take that idea, if we take the idea of, okay, if the one line has a slope of a over b and the other line has a slope of negative b over a, if we multiply those two, okay, like this, right? One line's slope, the perpendicular slope, if you multiply it, well, the a's will simplify. They'll cancel out. It'll leave one and one. And then b's will cancel out, leaving a negative 1 there and a positive 1 here. And so we end up with negative 1 over 1, or just negative 1. Okay. So there's kind of like an algebraic way to show that a slope and a perpendicular slope, when you multiply them, will always give you negative 1. Okay. But of course, you know, we think about, like, all right, if I have a slope of 1 third, then the perpendicular slope to that would be negative 3 over 1. Right? Or if I have a slope of, like, mm, 5 sevenths, perpendicular slope would be negative 7 over 5, that kind of stuff. Okay. We're not going to prove it, so don't worry about that. We'll just skip right on to page 511. All right, and actually just put this into practice. You apply this kind of idea. All right, so using slopes to classify figures by right angles. All right, so letter A asks us to show that ABCD is a rectangle. Okay, so what makes a rectangle a rectangle? Four 90-degree angles, right. Or you could say that, an, an like, equivalent way to say that, uh, it's a quadrilateral that is equiangular, right? So what kind, of, um, what kind of lines indicate a right angle where they intersect? Adjacent. Adjacent are ones that are next to each other. Perpendicular, perpendicular though, right? We're going to use perpendicular lines here to show these right angles exist, OK? So how can we do that? Well, in one way, we can kind of just like brute force this. And so actually, they have it written out for us here. So we'll just take a look at the way they have it written out, OK? So they find the slopes, the, they mean the book. They have us find the slopes of A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. So all four sides here, they find the slopes. You can see we get 1 half and 1 half for both A, B, and C, D, and negative 2 and negative 2 for B, C, and D, A, OK? And then they compare every pair of consecutive sides. So they, they check A, B, and B, C. And they see, aha, their slopes are multiplying to make negative 1. So that means these are perpendicular. They check B, C, and C, D. They check C, D, and D, A. And they check D, A, and A, B. And all of those slopes multiply to give us negative 1. And so we can say that since, OK, A, B, therefore, is perpendicular to B, C. OK, we can say that B, C is perpendicular to C, D. From this, we can see that C, D is perpendicular to D, A. And finally, that D, A is perpendicular to AB, OK? With that information, we have what Sienna says it takes to show a rectangle. We have all four angles are right angles, right? Because all you know, consecutive sides are perpendicular to each other. And so we have a rectangle, OK? And so there's kind of like the concluding statement that you know, we could say there. Quadrilateral ABCD is a rectangle because it is a quadrilateral with four right angles. OK? So we had to show that all four of those angles here, right? Or this is one way to show a rectangle, is to show that all four angles are right angles. Okay, just by kind of comparing the slopes and stuff like that. OK? So kind of intense, right? Four, four you know, calculations you got to do for slopes. But of course, do we need to use the slope formula when we are counting those, when we find those slopes? Yeah. No, you can just count them, right? Just count them. OK? Let's take a look at letter B. Letter B is not done for us, or it's like kind of done for us, but we're going to do it ourselves here. Letter B asks us to just show that JKLM is a trapezoid. So trapezoid means one pair of parallel sides with two right angles. OK? So we need to show it's a trapezoid, and it's got two right angles. All right, so let's take a look here at our picture. It's already graphed for us very kindly. All right. So how can we maybe go about? Or what, what does it look like? Which pair of sides look like they're going to be parallel to each other? J, K, and L, M. So let's go ahead and find their slopes, right? Since we need to show it's a trapezoid first, and then we'll show that they have right angles. OK, so the slope of J, K, well, we can count it here, right? So it goes down 1, 2, and right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 2 over 6, which implies to negative 1 third. OK, let's also do the slope of L, M. 
and that is down one, right three. So is JK parallel to LM? Yes. 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 So is JK LM a trapezoid? Yes. yes. Okay. So since JK is parallel to LM, okay, just going to use my symbols there, then JK LM is a trapezoid. Okay, so we've established it's a trapezoid. Have we finished doing what, it's, what we've been asked to do, though? No. no, we still have to show two right angles. Okay, where does it look like we're going to have those right angles? JKL. JKL and, yeah, KLM. Okay, so it looks right, right here. So what additional step do we need to do here to show that we have right angles here at angle K and angle L? What additional step can we do? How can we show we have right angles? Isabella? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All we got to do here is get the slope of KL, right? And then see if that's perpendicular to LM and then also to JK too, right? So we'll see that. So let's try that. So KL, slope of KL. Okay, we'll just count it. Up three, right one. Three over one. Okay. Is three over one a slope that is perpendicular to negative one over three? Yes, so we can write JK is perpendicular to KL. KL is also perpendicular to LM. So right angles are at angle K and angle L. Okay. And there's our little analysis. Right there. <clears throat> okay. We showed it was a trap. We showed the shape was a trapezoid. Then we showed that we had right angles at both K, <laughs> bless you, and L. Questions on any of that? Okay. <clears throat> so what I'd like you to do now is turn the page over to five hundred twelve. <clears throat> I'd like you to try number five here. Okay, go ahead, try number five. All right. Remember, remember that we have more than one way to show that something is a rectangle here. Okay. Remember, we have conditions for rectangles, so you can use those if you want to. Okay. You don't have to do the way that we did. All right. Well, and we'll maybe talk about the different ways you can do it. Okay. Once you guys get it, give it a shot here. Okay. But show that DEFG is a rectangle. Okay. Go ahead and show that DEFG is a rectangle here. And there's more than one way to do this.
can you do further to say it must be a, a rectangle? Bless you. Uh, Thirty more seconds here. Thirty more seconds, and then we'll we'll go over this one. So here is what we did on the other side, right? We did on the previous problem where we were asked to show that a certain quadrilateral was a rectangle for short, right? We came up with all four slopes of the sides, and then we had to establish really that all four kind of, you know, consecutive sides. So we had to show, for example, that DE was perpendicular to EF, and that EF was perpendicular to FG, and that FG was perpendicular to GD, and that GD was perpendicular to DE. We show all that to show us a rectangle. But that's not the only way to show this is a rectangle. Liam, do you want to share what you uh, did to justify that this thing was a rectangle? Sure. So I found that um, the slope of a DE is equal to 4 is equal to 3 thirds. Okay. And then the slope of GF is the same thing, so they're both equal there. Okay, so DE, we found out was, we mean, wait, you said DE was parallel to GF parallel. first, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Okay, and then what else? Okay, the other two sides, yep, DG is parallel to EF. Okay, so you still had to find the slope, still had to find the slopes, okay, but we now, so let me just pause right there. So now we have this statement. What does this tell us, what does this identify our shape as being right now? Just a parallelogram, right? Okay, so far so good, but Liam, what's the next step? Yeah. So this is sufficient information now to guarantee a rectangle. Once you've established a parallelogram and showing one right angle, right? So DG is parallel is perpendicular to GF. That creates a right angle here, but then since we already said it's a parallelogram, opposite angle will be congruent. But since it's also a parallelogram, these two angles will be supplementary, so that means that's right and that's right and we're done. We don't have any more work we need to do there, okay? So alternative to showing four pairs of sides are perpendicular, so DEFG is a rectangle. You can show two pairs of sides, two opposite pairs of sides are parallel, and then one um, perpendicular, okay, pair of sides. Is an alternative there, okay? Anyone come up with a different method of saying that it's a rectangle? Okay. 
So we have some other conditions for rectangles. If you remember, um, what's true about the diagonals of a rectangle? Okay, so parallelogram bisects them, so therefore a rectangle will bisect. What's unique to a rectangle that a parallelogram doesn't have, though? The, the diagonals will also be what? Equal. Equal. So an alternative here is to kind of do what Liam did, where he showed that opposite sides were parallel. And then if you wanted to, you could show that df, that length, is the same as the length from G to E. And of course, to do length in the coordinate plane, we would have to use the distance formula. Exactly right. The distance formula. The distance formula there. So you'd have to say the distance from D to F, the distance from G to E, or you know, make a right triangle of those parts so you could do it that way as well. Okay? Not too hard to do either. Okay? Um, actually, no, the right triangle would be hard there because of the. Well, no, you can do it. You can do it. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Okay. Anyway, um, what else do I want to say? I think that's it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Moving on. Okay. Yes. Yes, you may. Oh, right. I did have one more thing I wanted to ask about, too. Sorry. We didn't really talk about. Um, rhombuses at all, but that could be used as well, because what is perpendicular about a rhombus? The middle. Ethan? The sides. Sides don't have to be. The diagonals. the diagonals need to be perpendicular. So if you wanted to prove a shape was a rhombus, first establish that it's a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel, right? Opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are congruent, whatever you want to do there. Then if you can show that the diagonals are perpendicular, guarantee that that thing is a rhombus. Okay, I think I had one other idea I wanted to explain. Yes, okay. So um, another way we could show that this thing is a parallelogram, remember the parallelograms we said earlier, the diagonals bisect. What, since we're in the coordinate plane, what thing can we use to identify whether these diagonals bisect here? Okay. So what thing, since we're in the coordinate plane, what formula do we have that can help us identify whether the diagonals are in fact bisecting or not? Yeah. Okay, so we could use distance formula there. The catch of the distance, right, midpoint. Right. What would be true? What would be true about the diagonals' midpoints? If they bisect, where would they be? They'd be the same. Exactly right. They would be the same. So what you could do here. You could find the midpoint of DF, the midpoint of GE. That would also guarantee that, and if they were the same point, that would guarantee you a parallelogram, and then you could do other things from there, right? Once we establish something as a parallelogram, it's just like maybe one more step to a rhombus, one more step to a rectangle. It's a little bit easier that way, okay? Alternatively, again, these strategies that we showed you right here, rectangle, rectangle, right? Those are also alternative strategies. And, of course, for the rhombus, again, because this rhombus shows up in your homework, uh, for the rhombus, you want to show it's a parallelogram first, and then try and show that you have perpendicular diagonals, like Bella said. OK. So I think, actually, that that's all I have to say about that. It's pretty crazy, all right? That's, that's it. But it is it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys your assignment. Please do get started on it, right? Or work on your 10 marks. All right, we do have 10 marks due this evening. Please don't wait until 10.13 and email me saying, Ms. Woman, I have questions. Take a look at it right now. You did it once at 11.30. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I really can't say anything because I procrastinate too. So, I mean, I'd be a hypocrite if I, but I'm just, I just try to encourage you to not, you know, I mean, I try to encourage you to not procrastinate. It's just stressful. <coughs> Let me see if Google Classroom is going to cooperate with me. Can I go to the bathroom? Yes. Yes. All right. Page 516. Numbers 2, 3, 6 to 15, all. Okay, there's your assignment and, of course, 10 marks. <laughs>
So when our teacher is giving us like, chances to finish, like, do, you know, make our painting better. Grab it. Yeah, you want to go grab it right now? All right, that's fine.